Hey, how's it going guys? Justin Chang here from Lean Associates SGV. Oftentimes, once we get to the purchase contract phase or the lease contract phase, we get questions from our clients regarding the details and the nuances within the language. And although we can interpret the language uh, as best as we can as brokers, we always advise that they seek legal counsel. So I wanted to introduce a good friend and an excellent attorney, Usman Mohammed from Consensus Legal. Can you tell us a little bit about your business and your practice? Sure. I am a real estate lawyer that focuses on sales and leasing transactions, and I'm the founder of Consensus Legal Law Firm. I frequently give seminars to real estate professionals, and that's how I came to know Justin as well as Kevin. And as the years have gone by and their business has grown, I've worked on more and more transactions with them. What are some of the items that a buyer should look out for in the purchase contract? So the sellers, most sellers in Southern California will use a purchase and sale agreement published by the AIR CRE. And one thing that buyers should be aware of is the due diligence period and to start your due diligence as soon as possible. That 30 day, 45, 60 day due diligence period seems to really sneak up on buyers. And under these purchase and sale agreements, sellers are generally under no obligation to give the buyer extra time. In addition, make sure you review the title condition of the property. Properties are subject to easements, restrictions, conditions, limitations, and you don't wanna be surprised after the closing. So make sure to have an attorney review the title condition of the property. So occasionally we get calls from landlords who have a tenant in default, and oftentimes they wanna know what actions they can take and what the costs are associated with taking back the premises. Yeah, well, the, the best advice for a landlord, number one, is do not lock out the tenant unilaterally. That's prohibited by California law, and you'll get in all sorts of trouble if you do that. The proper process begins with a three-day notice to pay rent or quit, typically, followed by an unlawful detainer complaint that's filed in court. And if all goes smoothly, within 45 to 60 days later and a few thousand dollars later, the tenant will be evicted from the premises and it'll be yours. Well, thank you very much, Usman. Again, my name is Justin Chang from Lee & Associates, SGV, and we hope you found this information helpful. Thank you, Justin. And if you'd like more information about my practice, you can visit consensuslegal.com.